yourselves. Good evening and a very warm welcome to the National Indoor Arena here in Birmingham and to the last of our quarterfinals. Now, as well as promising you a night of unbelievable action, we're going to sweep you off to Coco Beach on Mauritius to find out what our gladiators have been up to at their winter training camp. Oh, that's something to look forward to. And here's something to look forward to, too. This year, the prizes are fantastic. Each of our champions will drive away with one of these fabulous top-of-the-range sports cabriolets, plus a thousand pounds. And we haven't forgotten about our runners-up. They'll each receive a thousand pounds spending money on a wonderful holiday of a lifetime on the beautiful island of the Comores. Let's meet our last quarter finalists tonight. They are Audrey Garland and Nora McAldrin. Beating, which must mean you're back. Yeah, I'm back. I'm back for a big time this time round. Now listen, your guys have all come from Dublin and they've come back again a second time. It must be costing them a fortune. Yes, I think they're all digging deep into their bank balance now at this time, but um, they better keep going because I intend to go all the way. I was going to say, they're going to be in deep trouble if you get through tonight and go through to the semis. How are you feeling about the competition tonight? Uh, I think I'm looking forward to this one a little bit more. I know now what to expect and what not to expect. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting going. You've absorbed the atmosphere a little bit more now, perhaps. Yeah, the atmosphere was electric the last day. I'm looking forward to sitting, soaking it up again. Well, we look forward to seeing you in action. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Audrey Garland. Nora, I noticed on one of your supporters' banners, it says, come on, Nora, give him a flash. What's, all, what's that all about? Yes, because I take photographs for a living, it's um, from my big sister Jackie to do with photographs, but there's other banners there because I play um, Camogie and Gaelic football for the Erringabra Gaelic Club in Birmingham. Hello, girls. And uh, how many friends and supporters has your sister brought along with her to support you? Well, hopefully there's the, the full 200 over there. Hi, everyone. <laughs> OK, Nora, just remind us about... Uh, where you come from and what you do? I'm from Birmingham and I'm a forensic photographer. OK, that obviously keeps you very busy. Uh, what have you been doing between the first round and now this quarterfinal? Uh, actually, I've been doing a bit of gardening and a bit of relaxing. No exercise. No exercise, OK. I think you're going to be exercising tonight quite a lot. Let's give it up for Nora! We've met the girls, now it's time to meet the guys. Tonight they are Piers Bryan and David Rodriguez. Listen, I never know what to say what it is you do because you're a man of such various bits of action and one thing or another. What would you say you are? Um, well, let's just say for now, for the summer, it's a water ski instructor. I'm a director of water sports on a kids' camp. That's why I like falling around a lot. Um, but I am going to be doing some more travelling before I settle down, because I know that if I don't do it now, I'll probably never get a chance to do it again. Listen, you've got one or two supporters. I think so. They've done brilliant. Done thanks for everyone for coming in. Everyone. I mean, they've all got T-shirts on. They've done a grand job. And without them, without them, I don't know, obviously, they fight half my battle for me. So, brilliant. It's nice to hear, and thank God they've got T-shirts on, quite frankly. Let's hear it for Piers Bryant. Dave, I have to say, you're looking very relaxed. Yeah, yeah, I'm uh, quite relaxed back uh, stage there. It's, uh, it's great to have all the uh, fans, the family and everyone here. It's amazing how, um, how relaxed you can get, actually. It's very nerve-wracking at first, but you soon get into the swing of things. What are you most looking forward to this evening? Um, I'm quite looking forward to all the, uh, all the games, actually. I'm not really bothered who I get. I just want to make sure that I give my best. Well, I'm sure with this kind of support, you're bound to do your best. Can you just remind us about where you're from and what you do? Yeah, I'm uh, a spa retailer, and I come from the Wirral Merseyside. Well, it looks like you got the whole of Merseyside with you. I wish you all the best. I know they do. Let's hear it for Dave! event so let the games begin first up on pendulum it's audrey and she's going to be facing lightning over to john anderson Content
full 60 seconds of circumnavigation and staying out of trouble will net Audrey 10 points. If she can manage 40 seconds, at least she'll be good for five. Lightning round the globe in double quick time. Audrey's fans adorned in war paint. The lightning shuffle, a technique that's never let her down on the pendulum in the past and doesn't look lightly to here. Almost within striking distance already. The vicious swing doing all it can to loosen their grip. And lightning looking to get a grip of Audrey's pink flag. Audrey's stalled. Oh, she's got her. Pulls the prize from Audrey's back. Careful, don't smudge your makeup. Lightning, such a fast pendulum operator. All over Audrey, and suddenly it was all over. I'll take that, thank you. Next up on the pendulum, it's Nora. And she's going to be facing Rocket. Rocket and roll it. The tape of her stats looks like this. A metre 82 tall, 77 kilos weight-wise. In comparison, here's Nora's numbers. The Birmingham forensic photographer appears to be 10 centimetres shorter, 14 kilos lighter. Three. Nora scored One. 10 points last time she climbed to the pendulum. That was at Siren's expense. And Rocket's not about to let that happen to her. Nora needs to be as snappy as her photos if she's to escape the Rocket's attentions. And at the moment, she doesn't know where Rocket is. Rocket having a gander too. Rocket decides to go the other way. Nora's mum, Phil, advising her to go downwards. Rocket knows the times are pressing. Nora still playing a wait-and-see game. She won't have to wait much longer. The race is on. Has Nora got the speed to escape the power of the Rocket? Ten seconds until she scores five. Rocket hot on her trail. It'll be a boost to Rocket standing if she pulls this one off. Oh, which is exactly what she does. Remarkable quick finish. Disappointment for the family. Well, just look at Rocket's final spurt. She sees the yellow flag, then almost sprints to snatch it from Nora. Victory for one of this season's new glads. Good work from Rocket and Lightning. Nil-nil the score after one event. So we now move into the men's event with Piers. And he's going to be facing Ace. Over to John Anderson. Contender! has never ridden the pendulum in competition before. The ace is a pass master. The pace of the ace is tremendous, even at altitude. And Pierce scurries for cover. It's all a bit high. Wouldn't catch me that close to the mechanism. <laughs> Brother Mark pointing the way. Ace using his speed to close down the distance between himself and the contender. And I'm amazed Pierce wants to play ring a ring of roses in such a dangerous position, not to mention it's against the rules. And no wonder John Anderson has stopped it. Brother Mark thinks Pierce has won it. And Ace clearly within striking distance when it was stopped. But it looks to me like Piers has his hands inside the red zone. I'm sure John Anderson will have something to say on the subject. The rules of this game are quite specific. First, you are not allowed to circle the top area, and both the gladiator and contender are aware of those rules. In this particular case, however, the second rule comes into play. The contender encroached on the danger zone at the top, and therefore is disqualified and gains no points. Piers? I don't know what to say, really. I was just going round as fast as I can, looking back to see where he was. Well, what can I say? He's, he's a fast guy, and you do everything you can to uh, avoid him, but I didn't think what I was doing was, was wrong. Well, apparently it was, and Ace, well done. You came up trumps. Yeah, it's a bit of a shame for him. I mean, he was really fast up there. It's just a shame how to end that way, but it's the way it goes. Certainly is. Let's hear it for Ace and for Pierce. Never mind. Rules is rules, and John Anderson should know the rule book. He helped write it. Next up on Pendulum, it's David. And he's going to be facing the Wolfman. Yes, once again, the beast has been released. He's 183 centimetres tall, weighs 95 kilos, and wears Mystic Meg's headscarf. David measures up well, four centimetres taller, eight kilos lighter than the wolf. Three, two, one. And the brakes are released and the swing is on. David scored five against the legendary hunter on his last pendulum outing, but Wolf's unimpressed with that. An arm's length away from the flag. Oh, David just escaping by the skin of his teeth. And his three sisters, Linda, Donna and Dawn, giving it plenty. 
David looks to escape the wrath of the Wolf for the time being. Wolf so fast to make up that early ground. If he can keep this pace, he may be able to run the Wolf ragged, but you can't legislate for the Hellhound. David's girlfriend Sophie with the encouragement. Can David keep the Wolf at bay? At least to grab five points? Wolf must be gnashing his teeth with frustration. Huge amounts of energy being expended up there. David's mum, Joan, on the right there. Thrilled he's got five points. And that won't help the Wolf's move. He'll be huffing and puffing. And David has the measure of the Wolf. So long as he can keep up the pace, there's no reason why he can't collect the full Monty. Seconds from ten points. Both tiring. Who can blame him? Wolf always so near, yet so far. Oh, goes for a grab. Yes! <laughs> At last, the Wolf gets the job done. One and a half seconds from the final whistle. Talk about cutting it fine david must have felt so certain he was on for the 10 but the wily old hound never fails to surprise sees it and takes it dave Ooh. you're not going to want to hear this you were one and a half seconds away from picking up 10 points i know i was so close but i was so tired i tell you what this is a game for the kids not us old dudes i tell you it was a very very exciting game of pendulum that's how we like to see it played However, you picked up five points, so not bad! Well done! And I think this belongs to you, and huge congratulations. That was a terrific game of Pendulum, and you got what you wanted in the end. Well, to be honest with you, on the way up, we said to each other, he's 37, I'm 45, what are we doing here? <laughs> but after that, I think the question's answered. We love it. Absolutely. Let's hear it for Wolf and for Dave. Well done. Good stuff from the Wolf and David. Hello, that hairy lady's back from last week, this time with a hairy baby. Now, Wolf's pleased with that result. He is remarkable, though, isn't he? He's not the only one. The Wolf giving as good as he gets. Hello, where's he off to? Sophia's son, Adam. Wolf, you're supposed to shake his hand, not take it. Well, I've heard of biting your nails, but this is ridiculous. Adam bemused, his brother Anthony just amused. And a quick snack between meals for the Wolfman. Well, after that sparkling opener, Pierre's yet to score, but David has five. Come on, let's go to Coco Beach. S is for support services. In this case, the medical backup team. All top international athletes require good medical backup. We are no exception. The gladiators have doctors, physiotherapists to look after any illnesses or injuries they have. But today, we're dealing with the relaxation aspect. And Pascaline and Veronica are here as masseurs to help the athletes relax. After a hard workout, nothing better than a good massage. And indeed, sometimes, just before they go on to compete, again, a nice massage makes them feel good, ready to deliver and be absolutely at the best. This aromatherapy is great. It's where they smooth essential oils into the body and the combination of the massage and inhaling the fragrance helps in all sorts of ways. Lemongrass is used to relax you and lavender oil is used as a pick-me-up. There's even an oil called Essence of John Anderson. Essence of John Anderson? Yeah. When they put it on, it really rubs you up the wrong way and it gets right up your nose. Watch me hair. to our next event. In the yellow atmosphere, we have Nora. And in the orange atmosphere, it's Audrey. And they'll be facing gladiators, Vulcan. And Rio. Spheres of fear get rolling for 60 seconds of metal-driven mayhem. Stand by for the seismic impact. Wallace, now 
lets every girl for herself. Nora in the yellow cage, Audrey in the orange. Breaking loose for pod three. Rio there to nudge her out of the points. Nora struggling to centre it on pod four. It's enough to drive Nora batty. Falcon not troubling her. Audrey with a long clear run for pod one. Can't keep a straight line, but Rio trailing in her wake. Nora with space on the right, and Falcon a mile away. Tries pod three. The girls seem to be struggling with their steering at the moment. Can manage the space and the speed, but the finishing touches just elude them. Nora again on two. She's up and she's wide of the mark again. The glad's being led off lightly here. Audrey blocked in by two glads for some reason. In fact, Falcon and Rio have impeded each other more often than they have the contenders. It's Nora again with acres of space. Can she do it? Oh no! And that's the way the score's gonna stay. The event not without its clear-cut chances. How disappointing. Audrey has so much time and space to score on pod three, but failed to keep it under control. And look at Nora's final attempt on one. Close, but not close enough. No cigar. Nora, very difficult to control the atmospheres. Yeah, I got close a few times. I couldn't get over. Once it starts moving, it's so hard to get it going. People don't realise how heavy they are, but... It's still a good game. You gave Falcon a slip very easily, though. Oh, but I still wasn't good enough, though, was I? <laughs> Never mind, you didn't score any points. Let's hear it for Nora! Well, Audrey, you did have a little bit of momentum when you first started up, but it seemed you spent the rest of the competition in this little corner here. <laughs> well, I started off well, and I just missed two parts, but I don't know what happened. I just got stuck. I was banging my head more than I was banging my legs. So. Well, I saw you actually trying to climb and get a movement on, but uh, Rio had you sort of trapped anyway. Yeah, well, I got a glimpse of Rio. That was enough. Plenty more events, but no points on this occasion. Let's hear it for Audrey! And Audrey's dad, Joe, conducting the orchestra. After two events, the scores remain the same, nil-nil. Now it's the turn of the boys. In the yellow atmosphere, it's David. And in the orange atmosphere, it's Piers. And they're up against our gladiators, Saracen. And your main man, Hunter. John Anderson. Contenders, ready! Ready, Piers, a water skiing expert, very handy here. Never driven an atmosphere before in battle conditions, but brace yourself for the bang. Now to head for the pods, but it'll be no mean feat. Piers with a gap to try pod four. Hunter driving him out of the points. Piers boxing himself into a corner. David in yellow. And Saracen is marking him tight. David digging in. Oh, Saracen nudges him out. Piers having a pop at pod two. Hunter is shadow. Oh, but can't keep him out. Three points. Glad spending almost as much time chatting as driving Piers on pod one and a real pile up head to head with David. It's like a rush out down there right now. David emerges unscathed, goes for four and makes it pay almost on the hooter. Smoke gets in your eyes and Piers gets a bash from behind for good measure. Well, let's see those two scoring moves again. Piers just ahead of Hunter to sneak in the three points and David managed to beat Sarah to the pod in those dying seconds. Smoking. Well, Piers. Oh, it was a fast one, and the worst bit must have been the clash at the beginning. Yeah, that's a big bump, that is. I'll tell you what, I realised why my hamster used to get so upset when I spun him around in one of those things. Because <laughs> I'll tell you what, they're not very nice, especially with these guys bumping into you all the time. Piers, you did quite all right. You picked up three points. Dave, it's not easy trying to roll out of the way of a Saracen. Absolutely not. I think he's got it down to a T. But you've just got to try and run. And if he stops you, you've got to try and look for another pod. And I think I've got one. 
You never gave up. No, no, you've got to keep going right the way to the end. Not one of my most favourite games, I must admit. Well, good spirit, Shane. Dave scores three points! Mum happy, David's maintaining his lead. And that's how the scores look after two events. Piers three, David eight. Join us after the break for more quarter-final action here on Gladiators! Welcome back to the National Indoor Arena here in Birmingham, where we've moved on to the second leg of the last quarter-final. And now we're ready for our next event. Our first female contender all the way from Ireland is Audrey! And she'll be facing gold! Over to John Anderson. Contender! Sixty seconds of rapid fire action. A point for every station Audrey fires from. Ten points if she hits the gladiator target way short with the crossbow. Next comes the mortar. Oh, gold zeroing in. Audrey breaks for the rocket launcher. Ah, oh, but gold picks her off. The gilt edge sharpshooter bang on target. That golden shot. Well, let's see it again. And Audrey, in full flight, takes it on the elbow. Had the pace, but was in the wrong place. The second female contender up against gold is Nora. Over to John Anderson. Contender ready! ready! Watch out. Three, two, one. Nora into the danger zone, relying on speed to take it to the first station. Gold's aim has proved awesome so far. Nora's pinned down. Nora aiming with the bow, fires the bolt and bolts herself across to the station two, the mortar. Let's it fly, two points off target into no man's land again where Audrey was picked off. Each station self-destructs after ten seconds, if you remember. Rocket launcher, gold rattles her windscreen. Nora off target, three points so far, final weapon, the bazooka. Launches the ballistic, but again off target. Now for the final push on the lower target. Into the Perspex Tunnel, she's made it! Five points for finishing the course. Great result for Nora. Nora, you've got to be very pleased with that performance. Yeah, I am. I'm amazed I got through it. You can't even see the balls coming. Did you spend a little bit more time aiming for the targets with the arrows there? Yeah, uh, it's really hard to hit it. But then, um, you just... Take a shot at it, and that's all you can do. Well, you did extremely well. Let's hear it for Nora. She scores five points. As a result of those danger zone incursions, Audrey's off the mark with two, and Nora with five. Now it's the turn of the boys. Our first male contender is Piers. And he's up against Cobra. Here's how Piers sees it all shaping up. I'm never one to predict anything too drastic. I'll give it my best shot. Uh, Dave's a great guy. I know he's strong as well, so uh, we'll just have to see. I've got some games that are going to be interesting, like 100 mile an hour tennis balls flying at me. But uh, keep my head together, give it my best shot, and fingers crossed we can pull something out of the hat again. Danger Zone getting its first airing this season. The Cobra not the deadliest aim in the business. Piers on the bow, takes his time, not on target. Breaks left to the mortar. Cobra holding fire for some reason. Piers takes his time, aims it up. Oh, just on target, rattles the outer rim. Piers a ducking and a diving, dancing his way around the Danger Zone. Oh, that was close. Rocket launcher now. He seems to have got his eye in. How does he fare with this one? Another good effort. One last chance to try for 10 points. It's the bazooka. He's under heavy fire now. Lines up the weapon. Oh, just misses the camera. Now it's the race for the tunnel. He's there. Five points for Piers. A long see-through sewer emerges victorious and Cobra gets a free firework display. While girlfriend Meg smile lights up the arena. Piers, how do you keep your concentration with all those explosions going on? I don't think you do, actually. I mean, it's just sheer panic. 
You were very precise, though. You took your time, you aimed and fired. Well, you got to just keep looking at him, but the thing I don't understand with is I started with my box to protect me, because you don't want to get hit there. Well, <laughs> only five minutes later down the line, I haven't got it anymore. So, uh, <laughs> watch out, because I don't know whether someone's going to fall over it out there. OK, less about the box. What you'll be pleased to hear is that Piers has scored five points! Male contender up against Cobra is David. Over to John Anderson. Contender ready. Gladiator ready. He's mad. Three, two, one. David, a supermarket managing director, can he manage to direct his volley or his trolley towards the target? Crossbow first, lets it go, no joy there. Next is the mortar. Not the most accurate of weapons, but two points scored so far. Into position now and lets it rip off target. Again, no real rapid return of fire from Cobra. Onto the rocket launcher. Careful aim. It's a direct hit, great shooting from David, 10 points, it's like the 5th of November, but David's the guy they all want to celebrate. Dead-eyed David, dead-eyed David, certainly. I must admit I've done that in practice and I was absolutely rubbish, but I thought I'd take a little bit more time, have an aim, and God, I hit it. <laughs> Even with those balls whizzing past your ears, you still managed to hit the target. Yeah, not too bad. Feeling good. Well, you that start. Well, you got good reason to feel good, because David scores 10 points! Yes. Oh, yes, indeed. After three events, Piers moves up to eight, David to 18. Fancy a quick swim in the Indian Ocean? This is brilliant. I wish I brought a football. We could have had a game. You can't play football under the ocean, can you? Fishes love football, loads of them. <laughs> Where did you hear all that rubbish? Well, I saw a book in a library, and it said there's 20,000 leagues under the sea. Well, I think I'm going to go and talk to this blowfish over here. Might have a little bit more sense than you. Mm -hmm. Standing at the foot of the wall, it's Audrey! She's going to be chased by Vogue! Going to be up the line also up. getting ready to climb, it's Nora! She's going to be pursued by Rebel! No! Let's go! Let's go! Over to John Anderson. Contenders, you will go on my first whistle. Yes, ready. There he goes. You will go on my second whistle. Audrey in pink, Nora in yellow, 60 seconds to reach the summit. Ten points await the winner, five the runner-up. Audrey leads, but the clock is ticking, and here come those glads. Vogue is after Audrey, Rebel going for Nora. And Vogue with a sticky start, Nora hasn't cleared the overhang. Rebel within striking distance of Nora, Vogue eating into Audrey's lead, the glads are looking good. Our Vogue's got an ankle. Audrey's fans don't like it, Audrey hanging in there. Rebel's got Nora tied up, one yank and she's off. Vogue desperate to wrench Audrey from the wall. She will not budge, great strength and determination for Audrey. The fans go wild. And so does Rebel, shouting on, come on Vogue. But why doesn't Vogue climb up her body and get a better grip? That's what I would do. Mind you, I can talk, here I am in the box. Oh, she's done it, Vogue's got her. Fine effort from Audrey, 10.2 seconds away from the five points. Vogue relieved at that. Rebel was fast on Nora, gets a grip and executes the strip. Vogue found Audrey a more stubborn customer, but finally Audrey bought it. After four events, Audrey's on two, Nora on five. Next event. Time now for the men's event. Our first male contender is Piers. And he'll be facing Hunter. The Huntsman in great form and superb shape, a metre 90 tall and 103 kilos built to tackle any event. Piers from Copthorne, Sussex, finds himself three centimetres shorter and 22 kilos lighter. Three, which is hardly two, the news he wants to hear if he's to drag Hunter out of the whiplash ring and score ten. Oh, Piers goes a perler half a mile out of the ring. His supporters stun into silence. Piers tries to tease Hunter away from the centre, but in the process forgets to hold on himself. Our second male contender is David. And 
and he's up against Rhino. Like Hunter, the rhinoceros, a devastating whiplash expert. Rhino, 172 taller, 112 kilos and 132 chest. David, 15 centimetres taller, 25 kilos lighter. Oh, David almost off with his shoulder. David battling hard, but Rhino looks up to it. David's got the keeper grip, circling the Rhino, trying to tug him away. David's industry is remarkable. Once again, expending incredible energy. Needs to pull Rhino out of the ring if he's to secure 10 points. But Rhino seems to be rooted to the spot. David could run rings around him, but Rhino's still in command. Time going down. Rhino moves fast for such a big man. Coping with the pulling power of David, and David like a rag doll being thrown all over the place. There'll be no points from this event. Good work from Rhino. David's done. Well, Rhino gave David no quarter, defended the middle ground, and in the end, David let it slip. After four events in the men's, Piers stays on eight, David on 18. <laughs> She faces Rio, Rebel, Vogue, Falcon, and Lightning. Over to John Anderson. Contender Rio! The dynamic Dubliner. We've got Audrey figured like this. Height a metre 70 and weight 59 kilos. And she does possess enormous determination and stamina. All of which is going to come into play as she runs the gauntlet of fear. And immediately stunned by Rio. Tries to back her up. Rio, a daunting presence in the gauntlet. But Audrey edging herself into Rebel territory. Rebel parries her way with a pad. Audrey shoulders the burden and plows through. Next comes the bow. The barrier's down, but Audrey's up to it. Falcon, power pads, prime. Audrey's never run the gauntlet before, but you wouldn't think so to look at this superb agility from Audrey. Looks like five points to me. And the Irish are smiling now. Good girl, Audrey. That was fantastic at first, obviously. You hit the brick wall with Rio there at the start, and then you picked up some momentum. Yeah, Rio just keeps coming back to haunt me on every game. Cody, I was determined to get to the end of that. I'm really pleased with that one. Well, let's bring Eugene in to find out what the time was. Audrey crossed the line in 23 seconds for five points. Five points, well done, Audrey! Eugene doesn't mince his words, the points confirmed there. Next up to run the gauntlet, it's Nora! Over to John Anderson. Contender Rene! The crowd sing Nora's praises. One bloke blowed his own trumpet there. Rene! Silhouettes of the terror to come. Three, two, one! Nora! Hello, darkness falls again. Someone feed the meter, thank you. But this won't be light work for Nora. She's run the court before and scored zero. The photographer's about to see what develops right now. At the moment, it's all negative. Rio driving Nora up the wall. It eases Rio away. Rebel now working with those pads. A tussle with a muscle in aggravation alley. She deserves a medal if she gets through this slot. Nora's supporters there and everyone else wanting to get in there to help. Vogue, she knows how to handle a round rob. There's no getting round her. Time's gone, along with Nora's last chance of adding to her score. And Dad's wobbling with excitement. Rio did most of the damage time-wise. A real battle of strength between her and Nora. They just hit very hard, and as you know, the whistle went towards the end, so you picked up no points, but we look forward to seeing you in the Eliminator. Let's hear it for Nora! And let's see the final scores. After five events, Audrey moves up to seven, Nora five. Now we move into the men's event with Piers! And tonight, he faces Rhino! Solid walls to break through. Rhino knocks him high. Argy Bargy from Beers knocks Rhino into Saracen. Saracen can't get a purchase on Beers or the floor. 
Cobra sets to work to try and sort this out. Piers reverting through and into ace. The ace, no disgrace, pummeling with the pads there. Piers not from pillar to post. Piers is all at sea. The card shark dealing out the punishment. Ordered to let him go. Now it's the wolf. And the wolf is flattened. Oh, Piers is through. 25.9, the unofficial time. His mum, Rosemary, and girlfriend, Meg, salute that superb effort. Oh, a bit of afters from Wolfie. He's allergic to being flattened. Every credit to you. You just blasted your way, used every single part of your body to get through him. Yeah. That is, uh... Oh, it's fun, but I tell you what, that's hard work. Really hard work. It certainly looked like it. The best thing, of course, at the end was the fact that you managed to cheat Wolf. Well, I don't know about cheating. I knew he was coming up. I could smell him before I saw him. And I just saw it in put him to the side and kept on running. Well, Wolf, have you got anything to say for yourself? He shouldn't have got through. I just miscalculated it, that's all. That's a long word. Let's just bring Eugene in and find out what... Hello? Oh, stop it. Stop it. This man's got to run the Eliminator in a minute. Uh, what was the time? Piers crossed the line in 26 seconds. Five points! Well done! Handy five for Piers. I thought I was going to lose my box again. Oh no. Well, that's a relief. Picks up against the mean machine. It's David! David looking confident, assertive, but he wasn't like that when he arrived. Well, when I first walked into the arena, I was just blown away. The sight of all the people who'd come to see me was just one of the most humbling experiences. I've ever had. I felt so proud, and to see everybody there cheering and shouting was just unbelievable. Ladies and Three, two, one. David straight into the gauntlet and straight into the chops from Rhino. Head down and driving. The light at the end of the tunnel is ten points if he can run it in less than twenty seconds. Into the pads of Saracen. Sarah pushing David back. John Anderson's blown up. When the whistle goes, you stop. And when I tell you, when I tell you to let him go, let him go. What was the problem there? You were gripping him and cutting him. I'm the referee, I was the referee, but I was not gripping him. You were. First time I've ever seen Saracen in dispute with the ref. David enters the Saracen sector high. Sarah guides him down and drives him back. Question is, was he at any time gripping David with the pads? There are 17 seconds remaining. I'll let you make your own mind Three, up about that. Two. Here we go. One. David's next challenge is the Cobra. Cobra working him high and wide. Ace backing up Cobra. Ace with the pads. But David's not come to play patter cake. It's wolf time, but David's home. <laughs> Superb action. No doubt about that. David ran the glad dragon. Well, Dave, it seemed to me as if they were twice as angry this time after having let Piers through. And then there was, a, there was that little cuddle there with Saracen, but what on earth is a mature man doing? I don't know what he was doing to me, but I think he wanted to hug me today. I think he probably did. Let's bring Eugene in and find out what your time was. Just missed out on maximum points. 22 seconds. 22 seconds, five points. Well done, Dave. And let's hear it for our gladiators. So, after five fast and furious events, Piers has lucky 13, David has 23. Well, now it's make or break time. Waiting just around the corner is the Eliminator. Join us for more action after the break here on Gladiators. Welcome back to the National Indoor Arena here in Birmingham where it's Eliminator time. Now, in the women's event, Audrey's on seven points, Nora's on five points. That's a two-point difference, giving Audrey a one-second head start. On the Eliminator course, nine demanding disciplines on the road to glory. Here's what both brave girls think of it all. <laughs> I think it's going to be close. Um, I've known Audrey all week. She's a lovely person. I want to enjoy it. I want to do better at the games. As long as I've given the games 110% and I've done better than my other show, that's all I can ask from myself. I want people to sit at home and think, she's really tried hard and fair play to her, and I couldn't have done better than that. So I really want to have a good game and just enjoy it. I really think it's going to be a close game because uh, 
we're around the same height, the same build. And I say we've got the same determination. We both want to play to the semi-finals, so I reckon it's going to be a close show. Audrey, you will go on my first whistle. Nora, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two, one. Audrey Garland away, and here comes Nora McGoldrick. The blonde blizzard from Dublin leads. Nora's a local girl, so she's got plenty of support. Audrey's last eliminated time was a minute 41 seconds. Nora's two minutes 13. Bit of a difference there. Audrey High tells it over the net. Maybe extending her lead a little. Nora over the top, pulling it back. Good drop. Rope work next. The climb to the platform before the grueling hand ladder. Audrey up and at it. Limbo's away to the platform. Next, the hand ladder will begin to take its toll. Nora with an agonizing finish to her rope. Each element in this eliminated course designed to meet out its own individual punishment. Nora's people don't like what they see. She's underway on the hand ladder, but that rope strung her along and wasted too much time. Audrey with the long haul to the gantry. Dad, Joe and brother Paul behind her all the way. And Audrey can't afford to ease up. Nora on the trapeze joins Audrey on the net. Audrey, good, steady work. The top's in sight. It's been a long old night for them both, and it's not over by a long chalk. Gantry for the short sprint to the zip line. And the gap clear for the arena to see. The rope with Nora's undoing. Audrey for the quick trip to the crash max. Teaches circuit training to football and rugby teams. Lucky for them, it's nothing like this. Slow exit from the mat. Nora finally at the summit of the net. You can watch Audrey on the seesaw from up there, but she'd rather get on with her own run. Final approach for the splashdown. The support doesn't flag, and nor do these girls. Audrey with the second seesaw. Joe and Paul can taste the semi-finals. Audrey driving hard, won't take the fast track back down now. Audrey Garland into the semi-finals of Gladiators. And it's party time in the Garland camp. Mum Pearl doing an Irish jig for joy. And Nora sticking with it. What a game, girl. Finishes the seesaw now for the final push. Sister Joanne full of encouragement. The Travelator won't trouble her. Come on. Oh, except at the end, Nora McGoldrick. What a runner-up. Mum and Dad proud, and they should be. Well, Audrey, you certainly had the luck of the Irish tonight. I tell you, the luck of the Irish, it can't beat us. It's whipped me all the way. The only thing that throws me slightly is the fact that all these people are going to have to fork out for some more airfares to come back and see you in the semi-final. Well, that's part of our plan. I'm sure they don't mind coming back, do you, anybody? No, they're all so delighted, they don't even care. Listen, huge congratulations. Audrey Garland, you're through to the semi-finals. Well done. Joe and Paul there with a terrible audition for Riverdance. Nora, you gave that your best shot. Uh, I fumbled a bit in certain places. And they threw me back. Well, that's it. You've got to be pleased with most things you did this evening. I mean, you never gave up. Yeah, it's been fun. Some things work for you, some things work against you. It's been the experience of a lifetime. Well, you've, you've taken coming second in good spirit. Here's a medal for doing so well. Let's hear it for Nora! A fascinating job and a fantastic contender. Birmingham should be proud of her. The whole of Ireland will be talking about Audrey Garland tonight. Great scenes. Big hugs for her dad, Joe. And emotional times for Nora with her mum. There aren't many who make it this far on Gladiators. She has much to be proud of. Her sister, Jackie, with the consolation hug. Well, the women's eliminator record is 132.7, held by Helen Martin. Audrey's finish time way outside that. David's ten-point lead converts neatly into a five-second advantage. David, you will go on my first whistle. Pierce, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two, one. David Rodriguez attacks the high and low beams. A five-second head start under his belt, knowing his last eliminator was timed at 1.21, exactly the same as Piers. David leaps to the net. Remarkable agility, 13 years older than his opponent Piers. Slams down the reverse side of the net, ready for the climb to the handbike. The MD of three supermarkets in the Wirral heaves his body onto the platform. The younger man still in his wake, but closing the gap. 
time to get on your bike and Sophia's been a tremendous pillar of support for David tonight. But she can see the gaps closing right down as Piers powers the pedals and eats up the track. They touch down together, synchronised for beast swings, the high net rears up before them. This is where it can be won or lost. Oh, and Rosemary and Meg on their feet. David on the right, losing a footing, Piers loses a footing. It's so close, they'll hit the gantry together. The race for the lines is on. David and Piers, there's nothing in it. And Piers takes the furthest line for the hookup. David with the edge on the slide. His mum, Joan, and Auntie Beryl roaring their support. Splashdown and Piers away cleanly. David with the longer route. Seesaws. Piers in front. David is coming back. Mark, Rosemary, and Meg reckon Piers can do it. Second seesaw. Downs it well. Final explosion of energy, Travelator. Yes, he's there. Here's Brian from Sussex into the semi-finals. David Rodriguez just behind. Rosemary and Meg celebrate. Well, Piers, huge congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> You're through to the semis. Yes! Oh. It was just such a heart-stopping eliminator. It's exactly what we require. It's just what we love here on Gladiators. Hearts in mouths, it was just amazing. Look, all credit to Dave. He's a great guy and I knew he was going to be fast. I just pulled all the stops out. I just went for it and something I pulled out of the hat. Uh, I'm so thrilled. Well, we look forward to seeing you and your crowd in the semi. In the meantime, go up and see your friends and family. Let's hear it for Piers Bryan. A couple of seconds in it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, no excuses. Piers beat me fair and square. What can I say? Good luck to the guy. Hope he goes all the way. Was it? Did you just run out of steam? Well, I think probably I expended a bit too much energy on some of the games. I was so tired there. But all credit to Piers. And you've had a good time. You've had a good time tonight. Absolutely. It's been fantastic. Well, you gave it your best shot. Here's your medal. We've enjoyed having you here. You've been a great Thanks contender. A Let's hear it for Dave! <laughs> Sophia knows he gave every event 100%, but Piers takes the victory. Brother Mark and his mum, Rosemary. David's sisters, Dawn and Donna. Incredible performance by David. A real credit to Merseyside. Flowers for mum. And a kiss as reward. And Piers presents his to Meg. Right, well, let's slip away and look at the men's eliminator contest. Adam Stretton holds the current record with a time of 1 minute 11. Piers, two seconds outside it. Well, that's it for our quarterfinals, but things will really be hotting up next week as we start our semis. That's it. Join us for more exciting action here on Gladiators. For safety reasons, do not attempt to recreate any of the events you have seen on Gladiators. <laughs> It's Bullseye coming up next, and you know, Jim Bowen used to work as a bin man and went on to have a successful career in teaching. He did. He's here in a few moments. Then Chris Packham and Jenny McAlpine joined Bradley for the Chase Celebrity Special. That's at nine, new to challenge. Left in front, 